today's topic, we are going to be looking into the dynamics of testosterone to cortisol ratio in response to physical stress. My name is Marko Mäkinen. My name is Juuso Nissilä. Testosterone to cortisol ratio have been the measure of stress and anabolism in sports science and also in other stress for, for decades. So the main main anabolic hormone testosterone and cortisol, if you are making a relation between them, it is super sensible for the for the status of the body. Are you anabolic and, and, and repairing and growing your tissues or contrary, are you, are you catabolic? And uh, together they are providing much more information than any of those alone. So T per C ratio is the per- perfect way to track down your, your athletic response to exercise. Taken that, that those, those those hormones, they are reacting in time. So once you are stressing your body in athletic ways, exercising, so it means that both hormones, both cortisol and testosterone, they are first during the exercise and immediately after they are peaking. And uh, depending on the on the on the exercise intensity and volume, if you are really doing like like uh, exercise which will develop you. So the, both hormones are first peaking highly, but then the cortisol stays up, testosterone goes down only to uh, compensate or over overcompensate like day or, or two out. Yeah, yeah, in the following super days. Compensation. Yes. Yep. What does it actually mean if the testosterone or cortisol is not peaking post-exercise on the same day? So, well, yeah, basically there's there's two explanations. So the exercise haven't been like really like exercise. It has mm. been rather like like daily physical activity or then um, the negative news might be that you are overtrained so that your body is not responding anymore it is like deep fatigue then and and and, and one of the statues that you should have like medical attention to okay so some the dynamics up we are basically looking at a spike of cortisol immediately post exercise as the acute stress response and then On the preceding days, we are looking at the ratio of testosterone to cortisol to see what was basically the effect of that training, yeah. whether it was anabolic or catabolic or mm-hmm. detrimental or bad. Yeah, if if we are, if we are creating the time series of, of physical exercise and loading, and uh, again the the T per C ratio. So uh, actually, we have a we have a picture here. So. Uh, male who is uh, exercising heavily. So uh, those bars. In the picture, they are they are the physical loading per day from zero to ten, and they are they are close to ten all the time. And what we can see is that the TC ratio is down, like all of the time. And uh, if we are comparing this one to the period of the same athlete that he is uh, he is uh, periodizing more carefully and and training less and giving room for recovery and rest, we are seeing different views. So the T per C ratio is even doubling on that period of time and as you can see the the, the uh, increase in T per C is taking place one to two pl- two days after resting so in the middle of the picture you have a resting day and and the second day and the day following after that they are the peaking values of, of your T per C ratio so uh, it could be said that this uh, high high responsiveness and Dynamic is a typical feature of the T T to C ratio. Yeah, it, yeah, in these pictures we can we can see the relative changes that that may take place during the training. So the upper panel is showing the, the hard training period. Even the slight increase in the rest and decrease in the in the loading is creating a day which which is elevating the T per C ratio. Does this actually tell something about the person that he's a good responser to rest, or that he is yes. like dynamics are in good good mm-hmm. condition? He's not overtrained. Mm-hmm. He's doing it properly. Yeah, I, I guess that that's part of the athletic talent mm. that this top athlete is having. So um, you can't compete on high level without having like proper reactions in your hormonal milieu and and your body reacting positively to stress. Okay, how about in the conditions of lower training? So when you're Lo- training, yeah, lower training the 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 subject is is uh, this picture is in relative terms you can you can see that the, the changes are very hard up and down but in in absolute terms of course he is he is peaking much more higher higher during during those rest and following days and once more we are seeing a really clear 
causal connection between the amount of loading and uh, the ra- how the DC ratio yeah, it is, is, it is behaving. Yeah, it is kind of causal. So the, the only thing which is which is a bit creating some some uh, noises that athletes are training every day. But still you are seeing the effect of uh, hard days and effect of resting days. Okay. Uh, how much, how about female athlete? This is a question that we, we get asked a lot. There's uh, some confusion about the role mm-hmm. of testosterone in the female body in general. So yeah. how does how does the uh, TC, uh, testosterone to cortisol dynamics, how do they behave in female athletes? Yeah. We have the corresponding data also from top female athlete. Here we have a graph of, of top level female athlete having high volume training period and, and then the period with more rest and recovery. And we can easily track the same same kind of functionality. So uh, the lower panel is starting from uh, following the rest. So uh, there has been a day of total rest at the first and the T per C ratio is, is uh, rising up for two days. And then uh, suddenly there is a hard training day, which is then taking down the TC ratio again. And uh, we can see that there will be a, a, a rest day again, which will again turn the, the direction of the TC ratio up. So you can easily see that the, the TC ratio is lagging the, the, the distribution of, of, of uh, load and coming like one or two days after, after the training load. We've established that the dynamics of testosterone and cortisol in, in response to physical loading are universal in both sexes. Uh, how about the absolute values then? How do they differ? What we have been measuring is that female seems to have pretty high levels of, of free testosterone. Hmm. So it's it's been it's been a news to us, and I guess that quite many people doesn't doesn't know that testosterone is playing a big role also in female athletes. Anabolism and, and 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 metabolism all over, and uh, the values may be very high. So on on our data, which is collected from top athletes on both sexes, we are roughly seeing the level of uh, two per one. So male athlete seems to have only two times higher testosterone levels than than females do have. This is this is somewhat contrary to what is typically believed mm-hmm. in in online discussions, where mm-hmm. the value difference is thought mm-hmm. to be much bigger so this has been quite a big surprise to yeah. us opinions are, are derived from the fact that most of the testosterone have been measured total plasma testosterone mm. where the, the difference of like tenfold difference between male and female is a fact but when it comes to free hormones so the free salivary and free plasma testosterone it is meant to act and and carry on the, the biological function of the testosterone and, and, and take the anabolism forwards. So what it comes to free fraction of testosterone, male and female, seems to be much closer to each other. We are basically talking about the free hormone hypothesis yes. now, so, uh, which dictate that uh, only the free fraction of the hormone is uh, bioactive since it's capable of binding to the receptor yes. and entering the cell. Yeah, there, there's, there starts to be quite much information and 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 opinion that 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 would be the way how to look how to look hormone so that the free fraction is the one that you should be interested on uh we also have a we also have another way of looking into it, this data which we call the summa map which is our own way of mapping testosterone to cortisol ratio versus loading user perhaps you could show some uh, visuals on how the yeah, mapping is a, behaving yeah. this map is the way how we are collecting and presenting the, the longitudinal data of uh, of training and anabolism together mm. so uh, so the x axis so numbers going from from left to right they are they are describing the amount of of uh, training intensity on on that day and and the, the y axis is is giving the value for anabolism and the, the cross crossed lines in between they are presenting the average of the user so anytime you are above the 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 horizontal line, you are more anabolic than normally, and if below, you are more catabolic than normally. And uh, if you are more right, you are you are exercising more than normally, and and if you are on the left, you are you are having more rest than normally. And uh, this has certain characteristics that mapping. So the green area is is the area that you should be when you are when you are competing. So basically, that's the area where you are uh, having high load. 
and higher than your typical average, mm-hmm. but still sustaining a high T to T ratio, yes. meaning staying still alambolic. Yeah, yes. and, and that's that's quite paradoxical state, mm. but peak performance is paradoxical state, and it's it's difficult to peak that day just on your competition day, but that's the part of the athletic profession. But so. How many days can an athlete sustainably stay on that area? I I would say two or three. So three is definitely maximum to be on the upper right corner. And uh, the, the athletes they are normally they are normally uh, documenting feelings like I I exercised or I did more than normally, but still I feel very good. That was super day. I'm in a flow, mm-hmm. and that's those days are taking very rarely, and and we have seen like quite a constant pattern how how our athletes are going into that green competition peaking zone so we are, we are seeing a constant and seesaw of moving yeah. toward the peak anabolism that's where basically you should be on yeah. the competition day how about the length of the jump between two daily values does it tell us something yeah. and also the yeah. angle of the de- yeah, uh, angle telling. of the development yeah. So when when our athletes are normally zigzagging from the from the pink zone, which is training hard and compromising your hormones, mm. and they are if they are doing that professionally, they are having rest and recovery enough often, and then they are going to the yellow zone, and that that's the the two the two areas that they are jumping back and forth if if training optimally, and and normally we see that uh, after after having hard training period, they are having two or three days in a yellow when they suddenly can jump on the on the upper right corner. So the yellow area is basically decreasing load. It so looks like most of our athletes we have been measuring, they need to have two or even three days before competition mm-hmm. on, on resting area. So this is this is basically interesting in, in this this implies that we can basically develop an individualized route to peak yes. condition yeah. by using the map. Yeah, we have several athletes that have been founding their personal path to success, so to say. Okay, we also have another map about uh, female athlete, mm-hmm. similar mapping. Yeah. In this mapping, we are seeing that the the, the uh, repetitive way of, of being able to go to the green zone. And all over, you can see that the, the, the bigger difference between training days and resting days loading is creating a wider movement in the map. So uh so bigger bigger changes basically. Yeah, bigger so dynamic range. Yes. yes. So anabolism, anabolism can go up and down more more freely. Do you think that this pattern can be repeated? So is it teachable to an athlete that this is your route to peak anabolism? Yeah, I guess, I guess it would be. And of course you should like like also track other things than than uh, training. You should track your 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 nutrition and sleeping and 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 other life stress also like like traveling we've mm-hmm. naturally seen that you know your base uh, baseline values are highly different in different yeah. part, parts of the training phase so the mm-hmm. circumstances need to be taken into mm-hmm. account but once more the dynamics are mm-hmm. universal the values between male to female the difference is much less than typically thought roughly mm-hmm. two to one even only a third, 30% percent decrease uh, or less in females and uh, we've also seen that uh, competitive athlete females are actually on par with couch potato males or even above when yeah. it comes to free testosterone yeah. we have we have lots of female athletes who have who have uh, healthy values of older men in testosterone <laughs> this was a brief intro into the general rules of dynamics in testosterone to cortisol ratio in response to physical loading Thank you, Yuzo. Thank you, Mark.